Greetings, this is Rod Powell. Thank you for supporting this channel. And also make sure that you follow us on our Instagram page at YS Get a License. That's the letter Y, the letter S, Get a License. There you'll receive daily tips, motivation, inspiration, and education on what I feel is the most underrated opportunity available today, a career in the insurance sales industry. Oh, and did you know that we now have a podcast? Yep, You Should Get a License is now available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. I'll be building with other industry pros to give you even more insights, perspectives, and stories from people who have experienced significant success in this industry. So stay tuned, stay locked in, because there's more to come. We're going to make it fun, and you may even hear something that makes you think you should get a license. And if this is your first time here, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way, whenever we post something new, you can get the memo. And if you want to go ahead and hit that like button too, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that as well. Now, today I want to speak about a common question that I get asked. You may have asked yourself, and it might even be the reason that you're tuned in right now. And that question is, what is the difference between an insurance agent and an insurance broker? Now, before we talk about the differences between agents and brokers, let's talk about some of the similarities, because really at a glance, they're not that much different. Both help their clients to assess personal and business risk, assist with coverages, and may offer a variety of options. Both may even be involved in the claims process and overall will be the representatives of the client when dealing with insurers. So if you're looking to join this industry in a sales or consulting capacity, the question you're probably asking yourself is, well, which route is best for me? And that question is like many answers in this business, it kind of depends. But the big question is, who do you want to work for? And when I say, who do you want to work for? I don't mean who do you want to be employed by? I mean, who are you working on behalf of? Because an insurance agent works on the behalf of one or more insurance companies and an insurance broker works on behalf of their clients as scouts for insurance companies who might have the services they want or need. So let me break that down for you because there's two primary differences between agents and brokers. An agent can sell a policy on behalf of an insurance company, which means they can bind coverage. An agent will ask some questions, take the application. If the answers meet the underwriting requirements, which is basically the criteria for having a policy with that company, then the company will issue and accept the policy contract. Now, a broker, on the other hand, does not take an application from their client because the broker cannot bind coverage. The broker will simply solicit various companies who have the type of policies they want or need, and then an agent of that company or the company itself will finalize the underwriting and the sale of that policy. So in essence, if you decide to become an agent, then you're gonna get appointed with the company, and that's the ability to sell their product, their policy, and you'll be uh, compensated with some type of commission based on what you sell. If you decide to become a broker, you'll be, to be able to get prices from, from many different insurers without really being appointed. But when the customer is ready to purchase, you will need to get an agent or the company itself involved to bind or complete that sale. And commissions can be a consideration because agents are paid commissions based on the sale of a policy. Brokers may or may not be paid commissions, uh, but mostly they may receive a consulting fee for going out and looking for the specific needs of the client. And it's really not uncommon for brokers to also receive some additional commissions from those insurance companies uh, that they have connected to their clients. So at the end of the day, who do you want to work for? Are you working for the individuals and the businesses? and you, you have a product that you know might be the right fit, you're gonna bring that to the table, or are you working with those individuals and businesses to go out and find something that they told you that they need or something that you observed they needed based on a conversation? Regardless of who you're working for, you're still gonna be providing a valuable service to whomever you're working with. And those will be those individuals and businesses who will benefit from filling those gaps in coverage or mitigating risks they either know they have or don't know they have yet. And either way, a successful journey awaits if you're committed to providing that service at the highest level possible. 
Hey, thanks for checking out this video. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And regardless of the way you decide to go, the very first thing I'll tell you is that you should get a license. Until next time, take care.